at the time I didn't I didn't feel sort of brave enough to sort of tell people how I was feeling and sort of get help I guess because I felt like I was failing. What would you say if I said that motherhood was not the best thing I've ever done? It's been a real relief since what would you say I've started singing these songs I feel more connected to the world than I have since I became a mother. She's dealing in subject matter on on the record that's quite brave too you know some of the things that are are being said are it's almost taboo to to talk about things like that. It's so powerful because that's kind of how you feel but you'd never really say it. You Maybe you're expressing it in a way that even allows someone to go Yes, I've felt that. I'm fine, thanks. How are you? Oh, for a long time, I didn't even know if I could finish it and record it and let people hear it. I've experienced some sort of pretty um, dark and confusing times when it comes to being a mother. Those guilty feelings that you do get as a mother that you, you daren't complain mm. because there are people out there who would give their right arm to be able to have a baby and can't. And yeah. So how dare you complain? You're supposed to deliver, you know, the Hallmark card version of the experience of living a life, whether it's motherhood or anything else. It's like you're supposed to just say it's all great. And stuff up my own life, that's fine. But you know, when you're responsible for other people's, for your children, it's a, it's a bit overwhelming. Mothers don't generally feel com- feel comfortable enough to say, yeah. oh, I don't feel like this today. <laughs> and that's okay to actually express it sometimes isn't all great. It can be confronting. And that's one of the things that's really prevalent in this book of a divided heart, you know, the, the guilt that that women feel who are artists as well about their mind is always elsewhere. At a time when the world seems to be spinning hopelessly out of control. Imagine if somebody said that to you. I'm really, I'm I'm desperate today. I'm falling apart. Mm. I'm a a complete mess. Curled in a ball, crying my eyes out. Could you please come and mind the kids for a couple of hours? You'd go, yes. Yeah, of course I will. I'll drop everything. I might not have made the best, the healthiest choices in the past, but now it involved someone else. Mm. And the gravity of that, that just threw me for six. And living is just something. But when you're in that position, whether it's the stigma of admitting you're having like some sort of mental breakdown or something, you don't want to make fuss. You know, for us, sort of, it took a while before we were even willing to talk to each other about what we were going through. It was like a dirty little secret. You just assume it's all going to be wonderful and, uh, yes, you might have some sleepless nights, but you'll, you know, you'll be all right and you realise exactly how hard it is and how challenging it is and how all-consuming it is because it's it's relentless, it never stops. I didn't say to myself, I'm going to write this album to reach out to people. I just felt the urge to be honest with my own writing. I'm putting things in my songs that I, I worry that, you know, will um, you know, be judged. <laughs> and, you know, gee, she's a whinger an ungrateful bitch she is. <laughs> well, the start of any album project like this is with the material, like, um, you know, the songs, which songs are written, and, and that kind of shapes the whole process. I guess the, the times when I feel like it's a really good song is when I feel like I'm being the most honest. I drive and I cry. She just writes from a very genuine, you know, real place. The only thing that I've got that 
that no one else has got is my voice. You know, there's singers and then there's a singer like Susanna. Chant to the rhythm of the rain. Most of my albums have just been a collection of songs, you know, I've never sort of stuck to a, a, an idea like this before. I know who, I know who I'm apologizing It's quite a remarkable feeling uh, to have this many women that were all just absolutely loving being together and singing together. I'm apologizing for, I'm sorry I failed. I'm sorry. And to hear that many voices together, it, it does make sorry. the hair stand up on the arms and the back of your neck if you have a hairy neck. Sorry, <laughs> <Try. Try>. don't. <laughs> but if I do, yeah. <laughs> if I great job, you're doing the best you can, you're not a saint, you're a human being and you have flaws. I just, whenever I can, I just say to, to women, just talk about it, just talk about it, just be honest. Because you'd be amazed at how many people will feel the same way mm. as you. Surely, you know, you, you have to have to assume that you aren't the only person who's thought any of these things. You will fail at some things and you will be fantastic at others. And if you're struggling, go and see someone for some expert advice. Yeah, there were very few people that I really spoke to about it. You love your children. You clothe them, you feed them, you cuddle them, you read them stories. You know, they know they love. I think things could have been very different had I reached out to people in the first place. If I'd, if I'd made an acknowledgement and, and said something a lot sooner. Because if you're healthy and happy as a mother, then you're going to be a much better mother. So there's no point in trying to do it all. It's certainly been a fast track to some pretty major honesty. So I guess I'm sort of writing as I'm, you know, pretending to pay attention to my children. <laughs>